Hey everybody, we're out in the shop today looking at my 1989 CR125R. I wanted to stop before I got the whole thing together after doing crank seals and make a video specifically about how to properly install the power valve or ATAC system. Honda called it ATAC back in the day. Again, this is a 1989 CR. So if you have something around that year, something that calls it an ATAC system, it's probably going to be the same thing. First, we'll explain why a power valve is important how it works, and then we'll explain how to install it on this bike. It's super important that you get it right, or else it's just not going to run right. So here we are over at the bike. Uh, the few main components we're going to be talking about is the power valve linkage, which you can see here, the centrifugal uh, actuator, which is this guy right here, and the power valve itself. Now the power valve is in there, you can't see it right now but this is the little part that the linkage bolts to. So what does the power valve actually do? So it rotates about within 90 degrees and it changes the port size of the exhaust. So why do you need to change the port size of the exhaust? Well before the power valve there was you know a very limited two stroke power range. It was either all mid, all low, or all top. You never really had balance in between. What the power valve did is it made the power balanced all the way up through the RPMs. So what it actually does is by use of this governor, it's almost, it's not a governor, but it acts like a governor does in the way that it uses steel balls to centrifugally actuate something. What it does is it increases the port size at low RPMs to create more back pressure and give you more low end bark when you crack that throttle. And it decreases the port size at high RPMs. So we, here we have a great little graphic of how the power valve system works. On the left you can see low RPM, the governor is at its natural resting position, the valve is open, and you're opening the exhaust to the subchamber which is creating more back pressure and enabling you to have good power at low RPM. Then when you rev the bike up, the governor actuates everything, valve closes, subchamber closes, and you've got less back pressure and a straight shot from combustion to expansion chamber. So there's really no way, no easy way to install this. It's just you're going to have to fiddle with it back and forth. I'm sure there's some old guy who could do it in nine and a half seconds, but I'm not quite there yet. So case guide goes on like this, obviously. Your water pump counter shaft lines up with the water pump seal and bearing. The centrifugal actuator lines up with its bearing right here. And so you have to note one thing. The, how the centrifugal actuator works is you spin this at a bajillion RPM when you're screaming throttles and these steel balls inside of it actually come towards us this way that forces this these races out against the spring and it moves up so picture that it's in the motor <coughs> you rev the engine these these guides slide up towards us well, what does that do to the power valve linkage this is sitting here like this if you look at here there's a piece of gear right here that has been you know slotted to accept that guide and when that thing moves up when you rev the engine it actuates the power valve linkage like this in a downward motion so this arm is pulling down when you rev the engine and that's important to remember so this arm is going to pull down when you rev the engine so if the motor is sitting here like this the power valve linkage is installed properly after you watch this video, hopefully. And when you rev the engine, it pulls down on the linkage. What does that do to this? You know, if you can see well, you pull down, it rotates this clockwise. So it rotates the power valve clockwise. That's where it, that's where it bolts. Rotates that clockwise and shuts this bulbous chamber. The tricky thing about putting this thing together is the way that these gears on the back of the, uh, the linkage interface with the guide on the actuator here. So as you can see this is just straight, they're not threaded, it doesn't spin anything in that way, they're just straight, it's a straight mesh. So you slide this guy back in here and what you've got to do is you've got to line everything up and time this so that when you install it, it moves itself to the correct position. So Honda did actually help us for once. They gave us this little half moon shape right here. And as you can see, there's a corresponding half moon shape on the cover of the power valve linkage. 
So what you've got to do is you've got to place this in here like that and get it so that those half moons line up perfectly with each other to create a circle when you know, you're at low RPM. If you think you've had this wrong, you can actually pop this cover off while the bike is running and see that it works. But this is, the, this is what you want to see when the bike is at idle. So we've gotten the case cover on-ish. Um, on my bike, I can actually get this on and off while the motor is still installed in the frame, which is really great. On your bike, you might not be able to. The weld here might be a little different in size, which causes you to not be able to, you know what I'm saying. So, uh, now that we've got it back in position, I'm going to go ahead and try to line everything up. I'm about to, you know, hit the critical point of installing this. I can still move this up and down because those those teeth haven't meshed with the guide yet. But the the only way for you to install this where it's timed correctly is you you know, you preload it in the opposite direction so that when you push down on it, it spins it into the correct position. All right, so we've got a little better angle here for what's going to happen when I when I put it together. I've got it just to the point where I can push it down in all the way and we'll see what that does to the linkage. Um, sorry my water lines in the way, I really don't feel like taking it off. So we need the half moons to align like so, you know, about there. Um, but if we push this down into here, let's see what happens. Look at that, that's a beautiful shot. So see, as I'm pushing down into this, those gears are meshing with the guide and actually pulling this down out of alignment. So you say, okay, I've got everything together, you know, it's all good, but now these half moons aren't aligned, and I'm at idle. I'm supposed to be wide open with my power valve, so I get that extra back pressure at low end. Oh, maybe I can just, nope, you can't, there's a whole lot of lash in this, but you can't turn it backwards to the point where you're, where you're lined up correctly, because that guide is at the max of its travel. The spring is fully extended, it's, you can't go anymore. So what you've got to do, is you've got to pull the case back up just a little bit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to preload this by picking it up past, up in this direction, past where I need to be. So that when I push down on the whole shebang, I'm pretty much right where I want to be. So lastly, the last super important thing to, uh, to, to note when you're installing this system is this, how, do, how does the linkage stay centered with the power valve? How does that, the power valve's position stay with the linkage's position? There's a little flat piece right here that rides up against this flat piece on the power valve. All right, so I'm pretty happy with where I have the valve timed right now, and I say timed because this is something that you have to set and you can completely install it wrong. So again, that flat piece is lined up with the flat uh, the cut on the power valve, and when I push the case all the way down, my half moons are pretty much aligned. My backlash in the whole system, if I, you know, if I pull up on it, the whole shebang comes up. If I push down on it, that's tight. And I put it in right there. All my lash is used and I'm right perfectly aligned. So what's, what that's going to do is it ensures that when you start having actuation from the centrifugal actuator, it's, it doesn't have to go through a whole crap load of lash and then grab it. It grabs it right away. So it's tight. I like it. Now we're going to go ahead and install it. I always put just a stitch of red Loctite right on the back of this because mine's super fucked up looking. Um, if this comes off, I really don't want to take this crap apart again because everything, all the hardware is like basically ruined on this bike. But you might be in a different boat, you might want to hold the Loctite off. That's up to you. Just for reference, if you're putting this together, I'm going to give you a nice close-up of this because this is kind of held together by the spring right here. And if the spring jumps out and all these parts get disassembled, it's kind of tricky to figure out how they go back together, all these stamped pieces. I hope it's not too shaky. And if you did accidentally disassemble this, I hope that this helps you get it back together in the right way. This little shoulder here obviously goes inside that 
that uh, corresponding hole in the stamped piece. But this is just if you need to get it back together. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please comment, and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. Otherwise, I hope this video helps you out if you're in a situation like I was where you have no idea what the heck you're doing. And, uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe.